Hey kiddos, welcome back. It's Mr. Hummer again, and we're going to continue talking about intermolecular forces of attraction. And we're going to talk about how those intermolecular forces of attraction play a role in solubility. So I have today some distilled water, I have some ethanol or ethyl alcohol, and I have some hexane. Um, I have some test tubes set up with those three liquids in them. This first test tube is water, and then I have some ethanol and hexane, and then it just repeats itself, water, ethanol, and hexane. I also have a, an ionic salt, a salt, potassium permanganate. Now, let me show you the Lewis structures for, for each of these substances. Of course, water is um, a covalent compound. It is bent, um, and as such, um, it has a negative end and a positive end. And it can also hydrogen bond. We have hydrogen bonded to oxygen here. Ethanol, uh, likewise, is covalent. We have carbons bonded to hydrogens. But on this end, we have an oxygen bonded to hydrogen that makes that molecule polar. We have a negative and a positive end. But it can also hydrogen bond because, once again, hydrogen is bonded to oxygen. Now, hexane, on the other hand, is... Well, there are several isomers. I just drew a simple one here. This is a straight chain C6H14 molecule, and all of the dipoles between carbon and hydrogen completely cancel out. So C6H14 is a nonpolar molecule. So the only intermolecular forces of attraction that we'd see in hexane would be LDFs. Now, potassium permanganate is ionic. It consists of a potassium positive ion and a permanganate negative ion and it is a solid at room temperature. Now, how well do you think potassium permanganate will dissolve in each of these liquids? Well, let's find out. Remember, my first test tube has water in it, and we're gonna put a little bit of potassium permanganate in each of the first three test tubes to see how the solubility of the ionic compound um, does in each of these liquids. So here is my water. Let's put a few crystals in there. Here is my ethanol, put a few crystals in there, and then my hexane with a few crystals. And you should notice some differences between the three. Let's shake these up a little bit. And you'll see that potassium permanganate dissolves quite well in water. Now that plays a role here. Water is a polar molecule. It can hydrogen bond. It has a positive and negative end. Doesn't potassium permanganate also have a positive and negative end? They are, so to speak, like each other. Now, what about ethanol and potassium permanganate? Well, the potassium permanganate certainly does dissolve in the ethanol, but not quite as well as it did in the water. And that probably has to do with this end of the ethanol molecule being nonpolar, but this end can hydrogen bond. So we have some positive and negative aspects to this molecule, as well as some nonpolar aspects to this molecule. So the potassium permanganate, which of course has a positive and negative end, does not dissolve quite as well in ethanol as it does in water. How about with my hexane? It didn't dissolve at all. In fact, if you look closely, you can see the crystals of potassium permanganate just hanging out there at the bottom of the hexane liquid, and it does not go into solution. Now, the reason for that is because hexane is nonpolar. It has simply LDFs as its intermolecular forces of attraction. There are no positive and negative ends, whereas potassium permanganate has positive and negative ends. It's nothing like potassium permanganate, and so it does not dissolve in um, the hexane. How about this? How about my ethanol and my water? Will they be soluble in each other? Well, let's see. Water, remember, can hydrogen bond. Ethanol can hydrogen bond. They're certainly like each other, aren't they? They have similar intermolecular forces of attraction. So let's take my ethanol and pour it into my water, and we'll see how well it dissolves. So when I shake that up, we'll see that the ethanol dissolves quite well in my water. It is miscible. When two liquids dissolve in each other, we say they are miscible. So ethanol dissolves completely in my water, or we could say my water dissolves completely in my ethanol. They are miscible in each other. 
Well, how about my hexane? My hexane, remember, has the intermolecular force of attraction of LDFs. Both water and ethanol had hydrogen bonding as their intermolecular force of attraction. They're not like each other at all. So what's gonna happen when I pour the hexane into the water ethanol mixture? Let's find out. Are you ready? What do you think is gonna happen? Here we go. Do you see the difference there, kiddos? Do you see that barrier right there? Yeah, we have the hexane, which is less dense than the water and ethanol mixture, and it's floating on the surface. It will not dissolve in the water ethanol mixture. They are emissible in each other. Sort of kind of looks like oil and water, doesn't it? So hexane, having LDFs, does not have the same intermolecular forces of attraction as ethanol and water do, which are um, which have the um, intermolecular force of hydrogen bonds. Water and ethanol have positive and negative ends, where hexane doesn't. It's nonpolar. Now, I hope you're all thinking a little bit ahead of me. Are you wondering about my hexane over here with my water potassium permanganate mixture? See, potassium permanganate dissolved quite well in water. Potassium permanganate has a positive and negative end. It did not dissolve at all in my hexane. What's going to happen when I add this hexane to the water potassium permanganate mixture? Should we add them? All right, here we go. Can you all see? What do you think is going to happen? All right, here we go. Are you surprised at all by that? Or is that what you expected? Yeah, the hexane will not interact with the potassium permanganate, no matter how much I shake it. Take a look. We end up with the two layers. We have that barrier there between hexane, which is nonpolar, and my potassium permanganate and water mixture. And so we end up with a very cute little solubility rule in chemistry we like to call like dissolves like. It's only three words long. That means polar things will dissolve in other polar things or things that have positive and negative ends. Nonpolar things will not dissolve in polar things. And it turns out nonpolar will dissolve in nonpolar. And we'll show that in another demonstration. Okay? Hope you like that. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.